Storm Chasers was a popular show about, well, take a wild guess. Thrusting audiences into the eye of the storm, dozens of scientists, cameramen, producers, and medical personnel risked their lives over five seasons to bring us footage unable to be captured anywhere else. That was until the biggest tornado ever recorded took the lives of three team members. That's today on Death in Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing, anyway? Death in entertainment. What is going on, Deado? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Oh, Welcome yeah. back to another edition of Death in Entertainment. Now, my name is Kyle Plouffe. My name is Mark Mulcairn. And I'm Alejandro Dowling. In this episode, uh, it, we talk about the twisted tale of the Twist X team. That's a lot of T's from Storm Chasers. Uh, the Twister team. This kind of came up in my research when I was um, doing a lot of viewing of the Ocean Gate disaster that recently happened those are the billionaires in the little uh box in the submersible yeah yeah and um, james cameron could have saved them yeah yeah <laughs> if james cameron only has all the answers he yeah. had spoken sooner <laughs> yeah uh this this story is a lot more tragic because they go above and beyond to keep people safe and the fact that something like this actually happened is very very sad. Meaning the storm chasers. The storm chasers. Yes. Okay. Uh, there we'll get into. You know, safety was their number one concern, um, mm. and really went above and beyond to try to keep everyone safe. Uh, so yeah, it is uh, a sad one, but we will have some laughs along the way, as we always do. <laughs> yeah. <And> <laughs> That's your warning. That's yeah. A heads up. Yeah. You know, it is uh, some sad material we might be going through, but uh, yes. we're going to have the most fun with it possible. As we do, and only we can. Yes. So, with that said, we are going to take this all the way to May 31st, 2013. Let's get in there. All right, May 31st, 2013. Fellas, what do we have in the world of pop culture? Well, in May 2013, we had some big sequels going on at the multiplex. You could say that basically about any year. Yeah, but this, <laughs> this specific month, there's a lot of major sequels. Okay. All right, we got Iron Man, number three, Robert Downey Jr., Yep. I and checked out after the first one, so for, I don't for know. For the it. third time. This John is, Favreau. Yeah, this is Iron Man 3, not the number three movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. it's Iron Man 3. Just okay. so the people at home. Yeah, I'm sure the <laughs> people understand. were very <laughs> yeah. confused by that. Like, like uh, thousands of people just had strokes across <laughs> America and international. <laughs> yeah. So this one was directed by Shane Black, who Ooh. wrote the original Lethal Weapon and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Directed Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Wow. Yeah. And then he got a shot at the big leagues with this one. Ooh. Well, big leagues, you know, you know, superhero movies. I think it's kind of a downgrade as far. As, I'd rather, <laughs> I, I'd rather be the director of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, in my opinion. So what you're saying is you're too old for this shit. I guess so. <laughs> uh, okay, here to we go. To quote Lethal Weapon. Oh yeah! Right, all right. Come on, you, you lost me. You had me. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is like Martin Scorsese. Got him right back. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not cinema. Yeah. It's a theme park. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing happening to these people, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, the next sequel I want to talk about is The Hangover Part 3. Three. So also the third installment, like yeah. Iron Man. Yep. Big threes that They're coming month. back. Yeah. Oh, like Larry Bird out there. It's just raining threes. <laughs> The third install. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure. Very timely reference, if there ever was one. <laughs> Not Steph Curry. Larry yeah, Bird Larry out Bird, there. Because he's out there dumping threes all the time. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Yep. Well, The Hangover 3 was actually uh, written by the guy, weirdly, who did uh, Chernobyl, which I found very interesting. Oh, wow. Because... He he was doing like bad comedy movies like this. Not to say it's bad, but it is bad. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, it, but I just said it was bad. But yeah. then I don't know. He had a real big career change. He started a podcast, which you know is actually good at, for some people. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then he started doing stuff like Chernobyl, which I think is actually a very cool show. 
Mark is yep. his publicist. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, why am I doing PR for this guy? I don't even know. Who cares? And The Hangover 3 is about as dark as Chernobyl. Yeah. There's hardly any comedy in that movie. <laughs> they go to uh they go to South uh Southeast Asia? No, that's the second one. Oh, okay. And this one it opens up with a giraffe getting its head cut off on the highway. What? I don't even know if I saw this one then. And then Sounds hilarious. Oh yeah, because it hit the overpass. <laughs> and then yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Jeffrey Tambor dies of a heart attack, which in retrospect is kind of a fun scene. Yeah. Okay. Given his behavior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He Probably he's gonna have one in real life too. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably gonna be in the whole movie, but they killed him off just because he was a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then the next sequel, uh, three plus three equals six. Furious six, that is. Yes, for Fast family. And Furious six. We're we're here with family. <laughs> and fun fact. Yeah. Memorial Day weekend, twenty thirteen. Hangover three and Furious. No, Fast and Furious 6 went head-to-head with The Hangover Part 3 at the box office, and Fast and Furious 1. That was wow. a victory. Yeah. yeah. So what's going on in the world of music May 2013? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Alejandro. Um, big song, uh, top three were Can't Hold Us by Macklemore. Yes. Yeah. That was the number one. That was a big one. Yeah. He yeah. was an intense guy. How does that song go? <laughs> <laughs> can't hold yeah. us. We're gonna raise the ceiling like nobody can hold us. That's mm. not how it goes. Like the man that can't hold <laughs> us. It's yeah. not that we should do this for twenty more minutes trying yeah. to figure out the, how the song goes. <laughs> oh no, thrift shop. That was the big. That one. was yeah, the big yeah. one. I okay. remember. Yeah, because I was like, it was kind of funny. Yeah, a little bit. Or like, was it? How does that even go? I, I have a thrift shop. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> He's not even trying. Okay. Uh, next big song right now is Just Give Me by A Reason. No, wait, <laughs> wait a second. Big fan here. Yeah. Just Give Me A Reason by Pink. Yes. Just give us the title. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just I give me a reason to move on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Pink. I, yeah. I don't know anything uh, about the song, but uh, Pink has always been present, I yeah. feel like, in my life. It's a great color. Yep. Yeah, great color. Um, <laughs> Pink is evergreen. <laughs> She yes. reminds me of someone who I would hate, actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't <Jeez>. think so? <laughs> what? She seems very nice. She seems, seems like, like someone nice who'd be yelling woman. at a Target manager somewhere. <laughs> um, okay. For no reason. Yeah. Just being a dry drunk. Yeah, trying to return like a cart of milk or something. Um, okay, also milk. another big song right now, Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. Yep. This I don't remember at it's all. It's like I'm a mirror. Oh. Whoa. Staring right at back at me. I got a mirror. I remember yeah, that was a big song. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> what an exciting month. Yeah, there was a lot going on. May yeah. 2013. And but also it, not a lot. Yeah. It's before the storm of blurred lines hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And before Paul Walker died. It was a uh, right it before. It was an innocent time. Yeah. <laughs> we were young. Yeah. We were naive. The quiet before the storm. Yeah. <laughs> So in 2007, Dr. Joshua Werman, he was an atmospheric scientist that created a vehicle called the DOW, which was the Doppler on wheels. Is uh, that like that thing in Twister, the hit movie from 96, with the hit soundtrack that it, featured the cranberries? Twister! <laughs> <laughs> Twister. Nah. <laughs> yeah, he just gave up. Yeah, as the chorus went on through the song, it just yeah. got worse and worse. Now there's a song. That's, That's a, a song. song. Yeah. Take that, Pink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much everything these guys do, you would think that they got the blueprint from Twister. Because everything is like they're driving into the eye of the storm and they're releasing instruments that go up into it so that they can track better track uh, tornadoes and storms like that. A hundred percent, there's got to be scientists that were inspired by that movie. And that's oh, absolutely. And made them want to get into that field. Yeah. yeah. But it, that's weird, though, to see that movie and that makes you want to do it. in chase Because it's <laughs> not a really good idea to yeah. chase storms in the movie. It leads to like be, like risking your life for 
Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> right. or, or Bill Paxton's character. Who else was it? It's yeah. terrifying. Remember Helen Hunt's dad is pulled right out of the basement oh, yeah. yeah, that the was, yeah. Cow gets taken away. Well, that's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that that the- I would like to see. <laughs> yeah. And that I did see when I took mushrooms as a teenager there in Wisconsin. Yeah. Anyway, what were you going to say, Mark? I was going to say that was that the Category 5? That was like the, the ultimate one, right? That's the, what they yeah. call the ultimate. The F5. The F5, yeah. In this scene in Twister, it's so weird. They're like, has anyone seen an F5? Yeah, someone. And they just look up because Ellen Hunt's in the upstairs bathroom. Yeah. I'm like, why don't they just say her? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so dramatic and weird. Yeah, like, I, I was like, are they talking scene. about God? Like, I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> watch that movie again and watch that scene. Yeah. It'll really annoy me. Helen Hunt just gets done taking a shit. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Yeah. <laughs> Do not go in there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> to the eye of the storm yeah. or that bathroom. <laughs> oh, my God. I did, a, I did an F9 in there. <laughs> Talk about a twister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that the scene, ultimate shit. That scene was so over the top, and everyone was going, hub, 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 in my school because we had a tornado that summer. Yeah. Yeah near Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and guess Oof. what? It was an F5. Wow. I helped clean it up. You don't have to thank me, Wow, though. thank you. Okay, okay. wow, nice thank guy. you. Nice yeah. Guy. Nice guy. So Slap, where are... Slapping himself on the back here. Yeah. <laughs> so where are we at, Kyle? <laughs> so this was actually like a really crazy uh, match made in heaven. So this guy, Dr. Joshua Werman, like I said, atmospheric scientist, he created this vehicle, the DOW, the Doppler on wheels, and he teamed up with an IMAX filmmaker who also created his own vehicle for uh, weather sto- for storms. Uh, it's called the TIV, the Tornado Intercept Vehicle. His name was Sean Casey, and he would make IMAX films, and they teamed up together to create Discovery TV's hit show, Storm Chasers. Mm. This is like the golden age of people making acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> based on vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> Vehicle-based acronyms. It's like the... Uh, the boom time. So the, <laughs> the TIV, the Tornado Intercept Vehicle, looked a lot like Christopher Nolan's Batmobile. It's like low to the ground, tactical, uh, doesn't look like it would flip over very easily. And that's It looks like much... a military type of vehicle. Yes. That, that's, what I, that's the impression I got from uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, bat, bat vehicle or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a Batmobile. No. They don't yeah. call it a Batmobile. It was like a bat terrain vehicle. Or right, something. exactly. It looked like a tinker toy to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Worman, he was obviously, he was mostly interested in developing um, tornado warning systems to save lives. So he didn't think that the warning systems that they actually had were good enough. And he wanted to just get right into those tornadoes and deploy different instruments and be able to see all the data that comes from inside the tornado. So, you know, they'd be more uh, capable of being able to tell people when storms were going to develop that were, you know, would kill people. And just to use that comparison of Twister again, they had that also, but it was like it was like more crappier version in which it was just in a big bucket. Uh, yeah. That they, they Dorothy. Drove, they drove Yeah, Dorothy. Yeah, they drove into the eye. And then if they, they unleashed they it at away. the perfect time, they could save everyone from Twisters for the rest of time. Right. And then the the movie was not reality and yeah. now Twisters are still dangerous. Yeah. Well, it kind of becomes reality. Really? Go well, into it then. With this. Uh, so in his mind, if he could collect the data from inside and outside the tornado, he could further the technology and lead to better tornado warnings, thus saving lives. That was his mission above everything was save more people. Um, Sean Casey, as an IMAX filmmaker, he wanted to get the best footage possible that nobody else would have the ability to get. And the highest quality, too. Obviously, IMAX, we've all seen these movies. Absolutely amazing. They're great. Yeah. The one... I'm thinking of, in particular, Everest. Mm. I got to see that on a school field trip in the 90s. It was amazing. Yeah. The scene where there's an avalanche coming down, everybody closed their eyes and ducked. Really? (laughs) So these guys are just filming just insane things. They just don't turn the cameras off. No. Which fascinates me, the mixture of how you can be a daredevil and also a filmmaker. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was just, like I said, a match made in heaven with these two guys from separate worlds coming together and separately, not even really knowing, uh, both created vehicles that could drive into the middle of a tornado. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the camera guy from like Bum Fights. <laughs> <laughs> 
How so? <laughs> I don't know. They're kind of going into the eye of, of danger and stuff. The eye Very of the alley. Sin, the eye of the alley. Yeah, they go yeah. to Tornado Alley. That guy went to actual alleys. <laughs> what if bum fights had IMAX? <laughs> <laughs> you just went to a, a, a bum fights IMAX movie. He has like a field trip for, for yeah, that. Yeah, everyone's ducking when the pickle jar is being thrown at you. <laughs> a pickle jar full of piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was really gonna hit me. <laughs> I, th- I thought a bum was really headbutting me, <laughs> and his teeth broke into my mouth or something. <laughs> We are shitting on the, the the guy who did bum fights, obviously. Oh, oh. Yeah, that guy's a piece of shit. Of course. Of yeah. course. Is that the guy that went on Dr. Phil dressed as Dr. As Dr. Phil? Phil. Yes. That was pretty awesome, actually. That is. <laughs> and then Dr. Phil was all high and mighty. You know, instead of not airing the show because he changed his mind, he decides to air the part at the beginning where Dr. Phil comes out, sees the guy dressed as him who created bum fights, and says, you know what? I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. He wanted to look like the good guy. Like, I'm not even yeah. going to give you airtime. He's a fraud. Meanwhile, he gave him airtime and made a viral moment. Oh, of, of course. course. Yeah. Um, so these guys, they get together and they accomplish exactly what they want to develop better tornado warning systems and get the best footage possible that you can't find anywhere else. And that's just what they did for four, uh, five seasons, actually, over four years. Season one debuted on October 17th, 2007, and here's a snippet from the beginning that kind of just gets you ready to introduce you to the show. It's like she's trying to do something right in front of us. You gotta go faster, you gotta punch it. She's here! Tornado Alley, USA. Yeah, there's a tornado there to the uh, south-southwest of you. It's coming right for us! For eight weeks every spring, a maverick team of filmmakers and scientists takes on the impossible. Go, go, go. Tiv, go for it fast, but I don't think you're gonna make it. Intercepting one of nature's most deadly phenomena. There it is! It's here! It's here! Rock everything! Mm. It's here! Tornadoes. We're gonna haul ass right now. They're insane. Go, yeah. Go. Who'd want to be near that? Yeah, this is absolutely <laughs> batshit crazy. <laughs> People like living on the edge like this. Yeah. <laughs> but those are the type of vehicles they were in. They tried to plunge into the heart of Like some Mad Max shit. <laughs> yeah, it does look like that. <laughs> Mad Max is safer. Yeah. They may find scientific data that can help save hundreds of lives and land the ultimate storm chasing image. That is so close. We should probably go. <laughs> we should probably get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's. I'd be that person every time. We should probably get out of here. <laughs> we should probably Guys, be. I don't know why I'm still here because <laughs> yeah. I want to leave every time. Yeah. But we should leave. Should, should I get another take of that? <laughs> yeah. We should be out of here yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um,. So they're, you know, they're getting people right off the bat watching the show being like, holy shit. And like I said, they wanted to do everything by the book as best as they can to keep everyone safe. Uh, unlike the horrific Ocean Gate submersible disaster, shortcuts were not allowed in this production. Mm. Uh, these guys are scientists. They're high profile professionals. And beyond getting these am- amazing shots and scientific data, they wanted to keep everyone safe. Um, that was the point of the entire operation in the first place. They're trying to save lives. So yeah. why would you want to fucking kill someone you're working with? Ideally, you wouldn't want to. Yeah. No. On their crews, they would have a driver, a navigator, a shooter and producer to roll film, and a rescue medic should anything go south. So that they had multiple teams in different spots, and every single team would have at least those things. By the second season, they wanted to also like get out there on the internet. So they created this website... <laughs> they brought a team on get out there on the internet <laughs> get out there on the internet like all these little all these kids are yeah, nowadays very sassy <laughs> yeah uh they had a team that ran tornadovideos.net and that would show like the more extreme side of videos like uh stuff that they couldn't necessarily get on tv on discovery because it would be too scary too hot for discovery yeah <laughs> what would be too hot for discovery uh, f- paying their writers yeah hey! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like, uh, check out this wind. <laughs> <laughs> this wind is really wild. Uh, yeah. Helen Hart really farted this time. <laughs> <laughs> you heard of the F5. <laughs> the F6. Oh! Don't play this at work. <laughs> this is Fast and Furious 6. Yes. Yeah. Um, they had a lot of extreme clips, but also a lot of very helpful information. They had this whole blog rollout that would show you, like, in real time, uh, warnings about possible tornado outbreaks across the United States. And that was the blog era, 2007. Yes, exactly. 
So they were getting in in the gold rush of the blog era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The height of the insanity of the blog era. Yeah. We all remember the blog, yeah. right? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who's the survived that survived it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 2009, the show grew the cast by incorporating the Twist X team. Uh, Twist X stands for Tactical Weather Instrumented <laughs> Sampling in or Near Tornadoes Experiment. The acronyms are booming. Say that 10 times fast. Yeah. <laughs> or don't. Yeah. The Twist X team was founded by Tim Samaris out of Bennett, Colorado. And this has nothing to do with the story, but Bennett, Colorado was actually thrust into the national spotlight in the early 2000s because of this guy that they called the Colorado Spam King. Um, this guy, Edward Davidson, known as the Colorado Spam King, operated an illegal spamming company, Power Promotions, from July 2002 through April 2007 from a home in Bennett where he had a large network of computers and servers, according to federal authorities. The spam contained false header information concealing the actual sender uh, from the recipient of the emails. Davidson provided spammed messages for about 19 different companies, prosecutors said. Some of the emailed pitches were used to dupe stock investors and manipulate the market. Uh, Davidson was sentenced to 21 months in federal prison in order to pay $714,000 to the Internal Revenue Service. Hmm. In July 2008, he escaped from a minimum security prison. Four days later, he was found dead with his wife and child uh, in an apparent murder-suicide. Oh, Jeez. wow. That could be its own fucking episode right yeah. there. Yeah. Jeez. This dude is such a piece of shit. He only had a year in fucking prison. Yeah. Why did he do this? He would have, if he escaped and he got caught, he would have fucking been in so much more trouble and yeah. probably got two or three more years. Probably. Like, the guy was just a fucking moron. Um, I thought it was going to be about someone that liked spam the food. No. Yeah. <laughs> I did too originally, but <laughs> that guy was just. I uh, thought, like, remember Abe from in the, the Sausage King of Chicago? Right. I thought this yeah. Was the, exactly. The spam <laughs> King of Denver or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like he collected cans <laughs> yeah, in yeah. his basement. <laughs> or he, like, uh, was like a middleman for spam or something. Yeah. Or he, like he owned the company. So Tim Samaras <laughs> from uh, Bennett, Colorado, lovely Bennett that we just found out about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Seems like a wild place. He created this project that essentially what this project wanted to do uh, was exactly what the original founders of Storm Chasers wanted to do. Uh, get precise data from the core of tornadoes by releasing cameras and sensors they could deploy from vehicles. And that's exactly what Dorothy from Twister did. Yeah. So Discovery picked them up. Season one in 2007 was only four episodes long. And they were signed on for four more seasons that were eight episodes each. And when I first read that, I was like, that's, you know, really small seasons. But episodes must have been such a pain in the ass to make. Oh, yeah. Because we're talking all of late spring in through the summer. And you're sending out four different teams just hoping that a tornado would pop up in Tornado Alley and that your cameras would be near it when it happened. It's just a ton of sitting and waiting and then praying you're actually close. And something has to happen every time. Like you yeah. need some mm -hmm. kind of crazy cataclysmic thing to actually make a full episode and to satisfy the, the, the fans. Yeah. It's so like the crocodile hunter. Yeah. He has to catch a crocodile. Yeah, yeah, but those that's much easier to be able to just jump in a pond somewhere and find them. Like this is you're at the mercy of wherever the clouds come up. I much would, easier. I would agree with that though. That I even went died. Yeah, well he no died but, making his show. Come on. Well, this is a content little bit, wise. Content wise, but he yeah. died making his daughter's show, remember? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah, a stingray just got him in a freak accident. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, you're right. This is, it's both Mother Nature, though, deciding that someone had to die. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> so each vehicle has their own team, and each team would be in different locations. There were four vehicles with their own teams in four different locations. So you have the Tornado Intercept vehicle, has its own team and location. The Doppler on wheels, same thing. Tornadovideos.net and TwistX all have their own teams with their own budgets in different places. It sounds very expensive to make. Can I say something quick about Twist X? Yeah. You had all those, you know, the acronym is all these words like tactical weather, instrumental, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it just happens to spell Twist X. Well, yeah, they did that on purpose. Well, I know, but <laughs> come on. That's a little manipulative. Yeah. <laughs> I think Alejandro's on to something. He just figured out yeah, how he, acronyms he work. He broke the case. 
<laughs> Hold on a second. That's like at the end of Matlock when they're about to start. Yeah, wait, they're wait, about wait, to adjourn wait. the jury. Hold on one more second. Excuse me. Your Honor, I have one more thing to add here. <laughs> like weather instrumented? <laughs> yeah. That's a shoehorn if oh, I ever yeah. saw one. Oh, yeah. It's more shoehorned Sam than... Sam Waterson over here. Than us with Al Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, twist tags. I know what that means. That That's a, that's a word for something else. Check Ooh. out this acronym. Hello. <laughs> This old court's out of order. That's a big vortex. <laughs> <laughs> you got your head all the way up it. You got your car all the way up it. <laughs> you got your F5 all the way up it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Discovery at this time was especially notorious for being stingy with its show's creators and cast. Uh, they were making money hand over fist, but not letting anyone, anyone know. Oh, I believe that. So this is... One of the shows where I would actually give them a pass for not wanting to put up so much money for it. So I, when I was doing stand-up a lot, I opened up for Ben Bailey, uh, who was the host of Cash Cab. Yeah, I remember that guy. And this was all when this was happening. So I was opening up for him in probably like 2010, 2011. And he told me these stories about how Discovery was, you know, they were hard to work with. I mean, it was great. He got the opportunity, but... Uh, Discovery was, produced Cash Cab or he's yeah. doing other stuff? Okay. Yeah, so he was always going back and forth trying to get more money because he knew Cash Cab was doing well. And so he had this uh, lawyer. His lawyer was Jeff Cohen. And he would get Jeff to represent the other guys on Discovery as well. So like all the guys from um, the Deep Sea Fishing show. Deadliest, Deadliest catch. catch. Yeah. Uh, he hooked him up with Jeff. He's like, you got to uh, get my lawyer. You'll get more money. And he said it worked. Like he... Jeff would go to so bat they, for them. So they all kind of like uh, um, like negotiate together as a collective a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So he ended up, yeah, Jeff ended up taking on like so many of the Discovery Channel guys and getting them more money. Uh, Jeff, it's interesting, used to be an actor, and you guys know exactly who this person is. Sounds familiar. He was in a movie called The Goonies. Oh, yes! As Chunk. What? Yeah, and that, now through that, yeah, yeah, he's an entertainment yeah. lawyer now. Yes, because because he also the guy who played uh, Short Round or Data, Data, no, the guy who's in Everything Everywhere All at Once. He's still his, uh, and he was in Goonies with them too. Oh yeah, what's yeah, the yeah. Asian kid's name? Uh, yeah, he was. He, he's an Oscar winner now. Yeah, he was da the guy that Data. Yeah, 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 he's still his lawyer. So yeah. So Chunk pretty much was a thorn in the side of Discovery for a while, and he still represents a lot of these guys, and now Discovery ended up buying Warner Brothers, so I'm sure he's rolling in dough now. Yeah, he's, he's still representing all these people. Yeah. And he fights for child stars. Yeah, exactly, specifically, because wow. he was there. Yeah, he's a go-to entertainment lawyer. Yeah, yeah, he's big time. Yeah. Every story I've ever heard about him is that he's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Discovery, like I said, they were you know kind of tight on their wallet anyway, so they let this show go. They ended up canceling it. On January 21st, 2012, Tim Samaras and Sean Casey both came out on social media and announced that Discovery had canceled the show. Mm. Um, it was actually, word was out that Tim was relieved about the show being canceled because he was so annoyed about how the show came off. He was like, it's way too focused on creating drama rather than, you know, showcasing a scientific, almost documentary style show. Yeah, Which he's in the wrong wanted. business. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're you're talking about a can scientist. You, can you believe this TV show was trying to create drama? Yeah, yeah but it, he's get like, people to watch it. We're we're too worried about the drama between the guys that are working instead of like focusing on how. Crazy well, this the is storm the Jersey is. Shore era, though. Exactly. Yeah, this is TLC yeah. Discovery. I'm not those here to were make like friends. the Titans. Yeah, yeah. That those people with that big family, that big ugly family, <laughs> the Kardashians. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Big ugly family. What are you talking no, about? The, well, the, the Duggars. The Duggars. The Duggars. Yeah. Oh, God. Ugly inside and out. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So just because the show got canceled does not mean that Tim was going to stop his work. The Twist X project remained intact. Mm. So even though they don't have a TV project, they're still active. In yeah, they're still doing, doing their, their work. They're, they still they own all the trucks. They own It's all their... Property. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the acronym remained intact. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they, they own that still. There it is. It's on the ground. Yep. So this is actually... Footage of them chasing a storm on May 27th, 2013. Or this is the 18th. I'm a, I'm a trained weather spotter. 
still looking damn good. That's Tim. That's Carl Young. And the person behind the camera is uh, Tim's 24-year-old son doing the videography. You can actually see the rotation here. This is this is going to produce probably a pretty strong tornado. Could be could be cyclic. Oh yeah. And there's the motion right here. Yep, we're just um, we're just it's almost a right dark underneath. Dark-ass club. Yeah. Okay, here's I should be doing what they're doing. Ty, uh, this is a dark ass club. Yeah. yeah, good uh, commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Scintillating yeah. commentary. We've got, we've you can see it's like touching the ground on both sides next to them. They're in the middle of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that's not. how it sneaks up on you. You just don't expect a twister to come right at you. Yeah. Um Well, I don't know. If I saw it I would think it would be coming for me. Yeah. So that actual shot was the last footage seen of them alive. What? That was four days before May 31st, 2013. Wait, so that's not the day it happened, though, is it? That was four days before it happened. So they're oh. still chasing the same storm, or is there a different scenario? So it's, I mean, four days later, so technically a different storm, but it's just, they're in Tornado Alley. They're in, yeah. this, in this town called El, El Reno, Oklahoma, and that's on the western side of Oklahoma. And they're just, you know, this happens every day, <laughs> pretty Jesus. much. Jesus, they're just. And it's like a certain storm. seasons that it's like tornado season, basically. Yeah, like in the movie Grizzly Man, when he sees all the grizzly bears are out and about. Yeah, yeah. It's like that, except with tornadoes. Yeah. So you can see here, uh, Tim's actual Twitter is still intact. Is it really? Uh, May twenty seventh, two thousand thirteen, intercepted large tornado four north of Lebanon. Two large tornadoes at once, too close. Wow. And Lebanon. Yeah, so they. Lebanon's Lebanon, Oklahoma. coming back into. Oh, not, <laughs> yeah. not Lebanon, because uh, that, that's where uh, Woody Harrelson went to live. But that oh, was, yeah. Uh, that was Ohio. Yeah, so there's Lebanon, another Ohio. Lebanon. Yeah. yeah. We can't shake it. Yeah, so it, two large tornadoes at once. They were literally between two giant tornadoes, like we saw in that video. Mm. I, know, I see that they're acknowledging there that. Too close. Yeah. So on May 31st, 2013, he said, Storms now initiating south of Watonga along Triple Point. Dangerous day ahead for Oklahoma. Stay weather savvy. And that is the last tweet he would ever put out. Man. Oof. Because that day, he ended up going, like I said, with his son, who was 24 years old and was the videographer, and then Carl Young, which was like another atmospheric scientist and meteorologist. And they wanted to go see these... <laughs> giant tornadoes because they knew this was going to be a big one. They wanted to see it up close. Yeah. And boy, did it ever In become a big one. They were chasing around for a little bit. Uh, the storm came bearing down on the town of El Reno, Oklahoma, right smack dab in Tornado Alley. Tim, his 24-year-old son Paul, and Carl Young, another meteorologist, all jumped into their Chevy Cobalt and went to intercept this tornado. They had no idea what they were getting into. The storm ended up being an EF3, which I'm going to have to look up right now. So that's not an F5. It doesn't sound that significant as an F5. No, it sounds like two less. Yeah, it sounds like actually it's like yeah, a weaker one. An EF3 tornado is the third most intense tornado on the enhanced Fujita scale. An EF3 would have wind speed between 136 and 165 miles an hour. Okay. Um, the damage from an EF3 would be severe. The EF3 used to be an F3. Oh, so they replaced, so basically they changed the scale. The, yeah, exactly. The Fujita scale is a new one. Yeah. Um, it's a whopper of a tornado we got here. And they're just in a Chevy Cobalt. It's not like they're in one That's of those. That's a little like, car. Yeah. They're not in like the these ATVs or TIVs or yeah. whatever they had. That's, I would say that's like a 2,000 pound car. So is that what they lost with the budget to the show? The type of vehicle they could go out in? Uh, no, I think they were just, they just wanted to get a, snap a few photos and stuff. And They didn't um, think it was going to be that intense or serious, or they didn't think no. they were in that much danger like they did the other day where it was like two storms coming at them. Yeah, the Chevy Cobalt is a very, very small car. What, what's the weight of it? Uh, the weight. <laughs> the weight. It goes zero to 60 in like nine seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the weight was 2,600 pounds. Okay. So. Wow. Could, that's like a friggin' thimble to a tornado. Yeah. See you later. So they just picked it up into the sky, and these guys are just like twisting around like Dorothy and fucking Wizard of Oz. So what happened was they were trying to stay on the outside of it, obviously, 
but there ended up being multiple vortexes in this tornado in in this storm so when you're actually near one vortex you can easily just drive around it but if there's three popping up you're stuck in a triangle and there's no way to go oh man they were on a gravel road and that's what they were saying is like really screwed them over because they couldn't get the speed needed to get away from you know being sucked in if they were on any other type of road than a gravel road they might have been okay so it's one of those things like with a lot of these like freak deaths that we have here, it's just all every single little scenario is working against this one person at one time. Yeah. So there's footage that they were recording, obviously, and it hasn't been released to the public, but it's been said that in the video you can hear one of the guys say, it's eerily calm right now. And then another guy in the car goes, yeah, I think we're in a real bad spot. And then all of a sudden, just bang. They were sucked up by a vortex. And two of the guys were ejected from the car. So Tim had his seatbelt on. The other two didn't. Uh, what? So, so his son got ejected and Carl got ejected from the driver's seat. And they were both found, you know, obviously later, like 100 yards apart. Mm. So uh, in that in that scenario, you just get ripped out of a car, pulled like um, 100, like, I don't know, like 20 miles into the air. How far, how far into the air do you think you're going here? Oof, I don't know. It's just crazy yeah. that you're just getting thrown by a gust of wind that high into the air. And uh, man, I can't imagine. Yeah. So it's like falling out of a helicopter or something. After one of them says, I think we're in a bad spot, apparently one of the other guys says, I think we're going to die. And then that's when, bang, the camera turns off. Yeah. It's crazy because there's footage of another guy that was in the same storm who was 20, he was 400 yards away from them. And he just got away from it, and he survived. Wow. Uh, so, so they were way about, too close to this. It was only about a matter of 20 seconds. If he was, you know, that if he was close to them, closer than 20 seconds away, this guy would have been toast too. But I wonder why couldn't they have understood that they were in a very dangerous situation having this much experience working with tornadoes and stuff? Look at how quickly this happens. Here's footage. So it's like seconds that you just don't even realize. Oh, it's crazy. So in here. This is like a regular kind of rainstorm, yeah. it seems like. Mm -hmm. And then Nasty day. within seconds, it's getting harder and harder. And then boom, you're in right next to it. Mm. And what is this footage? This is the footage of that tornado. That oh. that, that other that guy killed, from 40 yards away? That killed the three of the members of the Twistex team, yes. And he's the one that, at this point, he's probably 400 yards away from them. And they're back there. They, they're in that tornado. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ah, that's oh, so he's getting away. That so that's like the back shot of him getting away, or is he going to reverse? No, it? he took his camera and uh, reversed it. Oh man! So he, he was showing. So he's himself. like another storm chaser too. This guy, it seems like. I don't know if he. F yeah. But why else is, would you be near he's this like stuff? Filming it. He's not. Yeah, he's not like going to the pharmacy. This guy. Yeah, but look at that. Like. Yeah, it's huge. You can see some daylight on the left side, and there's you get nothing on the right side. Yeah. This was the biggest tornado ever recorded it was 2.6 miles wide man and he's that close he, so now he's he just he, got he's away still from dancing it. with the lily he's not driving anymore he wants to see more yeah unreal these, these people are nuts yeah mm -hmm. i'm not going anywhere near something like that yeah mm. this is and also some intense. of the debris that's picking up can like spit some stuff out at you oh absolutely there are many ways to die in that scenario yeah yeah and it looks like the closer you get, you just lose the ability to see what's going on around you or, yeah. like, how mm. to get around it. Your senses are completely gone. Yeah. You just, in, you know... You have no reference points. It's just complete darkness. You're swallowed by the storm, basically. Yeah. It is absolutely terrifying. But at that point that we just saw how dark it got, yeah, that's when they died. So, like... When it got its dark, so it's like kind of it clearing up right now. Yeah, yeah, and they're already gone. Man, two minutes ago, from this point, it's brutal. So yeah. they found their bodies and everything. Yeah. Yep. The Man. vehicle. This was. Ended That's up the being cobalt. The cobalt. Yeah. 
It's completely flattened. Yeah. Yep. That is not the car to be riding in for that. No. Yeah. yeah usually, like an SUV is like around five thousand pounds, and yeah. you know that that'll give you a little wow. a little more sturdy. But that might even get picked up by a storm like that. Yeah. Uh, the other bodies were, you know, found a hundred yards apart from each other, uh, but still like way away. So there's no laws as far as like how close you can get to a tornado. It's just like. You know, you're on your own if you want to do it. What kind of law would that be? <laughs> I don't know. Like, you're you, too close to the tornado. A, they're trying to arrest you in the middle of a tornado. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just run run into it and just like, yeah. you Your ID gets sucked into the wind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see here there's a Daily Mail article from the time where it says they were heard screaming. On the Oklahoma Highway Patrol radio. Yeah, I'm Before sure. they were killed. Damn. Yeah. But there's nothing anyone can do. Like, who do you call there? <laughs> yeah, at that point, you're on your own. Yeah. You're, you're too deep in. Yeah, you're not calling Discovery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're, and they're not picking up, trust me. No. Yeah. But like we saw in his final tweet there, it was just like, it's going to be a dangerous day for Oklahoma stay weather savvy it's like so he knew it was going to be dangerous and what's their goal that day what do they want to show yeah uh, are they like putting together a new like pilot no it was just they were still continuing the twist x work they yeah. were you know wanted to get uh more data they wanted to get close and you know they just did not anticipate it being a multi-funnel situation yeah uh or multi-vortex so they could have got um like separate financing outside of like a TV network or something. Maybe they're just doing basic research for, you know, a university or something. Yeah. Mm. The car was thrown approximately half a mile by the storm. Half a mile, jeez. Yeah. That is absolutely terrifying to think about. Yeah, I wonder how long they were alive in this process. <sighs> I don't know. That that would be like I mean the ones that got that's ejected a crazy way to go. probably died instantly, but there could be, you know, a chance for him to survive for a little while he's in the car. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Before it lands. Yeah. There was another uh guy, Richard Henderson. He decided to follow the twister and he lo- lost his life in the same area. Man. He snapped a picture of the storm from his cell phone before it sucked him up. Well at least he got a good photo. Yeah. Jeez. You know what, Dados? Don't chase storms. Yeah. Or, or waterfalls. Or waterfalls. <laughs> Take shelter. Yes. Yeah. This is insanity, but I guess it was for the greater good sometimes. Did they learn anything from yeah. anything that these guys did in this moment? Like, Yeah, they learned not to do that. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Just mean, stay really? away from the tornadoes. To, like, We're not going to figure out anything else yeah, about them to yeah, predict honestly them. like the day before the you know where you played their last video didn't they learn something that day that was enough mm. yeah why return close. there when it's even more dangerous it's not yeah. a good idea the weather channel even sent out some guys uh mike betts he was caught in the same sub vortex escaped with minor injuries but his entire tv crew was lifted up by the tornado in their suv and the storm threw them 200 yards off of route 81 <sighs> And they survived? They all survived with minor injuries. And I what? Bet, I bet he never does that again. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were... They yeah, were I, mean, I can picture him in the hospital and be like, this is not a good time to make, be making jokes like that, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. How'd this guy get in my, <laughs> my hospital room anyway? Yeah, they um, had other storm chasers out there. So it's a dangerous business. Yeah. Yeah, I think all told there was about 16 people that died in that exact storm. Daily Mail says 18. 18, okay. Including a four-year-old girl who was swept away by the floodwaters. And then there was a five-month-old baby in critical condition after being pulled out alive in the Oklahoma River. Wow. What? And I've just been trying to find out if she survived and if she's around today, but I can't find that information. Oh, my God. There are other tornado babies, though, where they have updates. Oh, wow. They call them miracle babies. Oh, absolutely. Tornado baby. That's badass. Yeah. That's like, that should be the new Twister movie. Tornado babies. Tornado, tornado, yeah, it's a prequel. (laughs) Nader babies. (laughs) You must be that uh, Nader baby. (laughs) 
<laughs> Tornado baby. No, NATO. <laughs> NATO. NATO baby. Not the military organization yeah. with the U.S. and <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Different yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm a fucking NATO baby. Yeah. Oh, my name's Twisty. Um, <laughs> there's been some real sad updates with this show, too, that uh, there's been other people that have passed away from the, the cast as well. Mm. Doing the same kind of thing? No, actually oh. completely different. On January 23rd, 2018, former Stor Storm Chasers member Joel Taylor died of a drug overdose at age 38 on a cruise ship. Uh, that is so many things that... That don't yeah, like, make sense. Yeah. Like I'm picturing it. There's a lot going on in my yeah. imagination. Drug overdose on a cruise ship. Because yeah. that implies he was having a good time. Yeah, and you're on a vacation. Yeah. Usually drug addicts don't just go on vacations on cruises. Yeah. But cruises are kind of ridiculous. Yeah. That's true. Uh, February 4th, 2016, Herbert Stein, he was the driver of the Doppler on wheels, died at 57 after a short battle with pancreatic and liver cancer. Mm. Um. Yeah, yeah, that so. sucks. God damn. It's you know, a little bit more normal of a death than, you know, the other ones, but uh, Yeah. Yeah, he I didn't don't die in, in a natural disaster or on a cruise ship with yeah. prescription drugs. Which way would you rather go? Pancreatic cancer or getting swept up in a twister? I got to say swept up. I'd say drug overdose on a cruise ship. Yeah, that's that true. wasn't one of the <laughs> options. Yeah, but, but that, that's what I'm going you with. You have to get, provide that third option yeah. there, I think. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, so that is the story of uh, the Twistex team from Crazy. Storm Chasers. There's actually, um, they continued a web series called Tornado Chasers, uh, some of the guys, and it was funded by Kickstarter campaigns. Um, so that there's no nothing airing on television right now that actually does the same thing, mm -hmm. which in which people chase tornadoes? I'm sure there is. Yeah. I mean, the Weather Channel does it. Every time there's like a big one that's expected, they'll have like their yeah. uh, tornado. But there's no there. like bear grills, but for or like you know the crocodile hunter, but for tornadoes right now. Uh, that's what they need. They need like a really good personality that can actually just get in there. <laughs> it may be not good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was a show called Tornado Hunters, which is basically the same title as Storm Chasers. Yeah, just yeah. synonyms. Was that a docu series or was that like a, a narrative show? It says season one. Tornado hunters and tour guests get up close and personal with a large and very fast moving EF three tornado. That sounds kind of like what happened on that Titanic thing, you know, just yeah. people that are on some kind of sketchy kind of safari thing where they shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. It looks like a docu series, like a reality show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, repeats of the show are currently airing on the digital broadcast network Quest. Wow. So, so is Discovery still making Quest. money off of? Yeah, so now go to Quest, not Discovery. <laughs> Sounds like a Quest to find that app. Yeah. Yeah, Quest has a lot of... They're actually on TV, I believe. It's uh, They got... Lizard Lick Towing, they get uh, Storage Hunters, Storage this Wars, Canada. Premium television. South Beach Tow. Yeah, they get a lot of stuff. Storage Hunters sounds a little safer. Yeah. It's Depending not... on the client you're working with. Yeah, exactly. You it's open not... up a meth lab. <laughs> it's not TV, it's Quest. Yeah. <laughs> and then I see here, there's not a lot, though, because after those shows, what comes up when I Google it is Storm of the Century, a Stephen King TV movie yep. from the 90s, and then Power Rangers. Rangers Ninja Storm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it one. really drops off as far as yeah. <laughs> what it, Power Rangers are concerned. Anything yes. making sense. <laughs> it's a fast drop off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, moral of the story do not go chasing storms. Don't no. go chasing tornadoes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, R.I.P. to R. all R. three. Yeah. What are their names again? Uh, we got Tim Samaras, Paul Samaras, and Carl Young. Yeah. R.I.P. to all of them. Yeah. And they died young. They did. Far too young. They died doing what they loved, though. What they were passionate about. Yeah. There's something something there about that. Something about it. They love getting smashed by 2,500 pounds of steel. Yes. They love being in, uh, you know, in, in the thick of it. They love being, uh, living a life of danger. Yes. Yes, they did. Yeah. And they say that about the Titanic people, yeah. that they died doing what they loved. Yeah. That's right. Paying $250,000 <laughs> to be killed. <laughs> God. Awful. Awful, awful. Yes. Uh, you yeah. know, yeah. what more can we say about this? I know. It's yeah. awful. We, uh, we sympathize for sure. Yes. So, 
Go find us on YouTube. We're blowing up over there, everybody. Yeah. 7,000 followers now. Thank you to everybody that subscribed. Uh, Spotify podcast, Apple podcast. We are climbing in the charts. Still on the charts in 17 different nations now. What's Let's up? Go. Let's yeah. go. Keep, keep those. Uh, tell your friends out there in those other nations. We love having you, and we want more of you. That's right. Uh, give us a review. Leave us a comment. Do something, anything. Please, God. Please. And join our Patreon. Yes. Where we have exclusive bonus content. Yes. Yeah. There is an hour-long podcast about our dealings with John Mark Carr. Yeah. If that doesn't get you over there, I don't Who's know a real will. piece of work pervert from... <laughs> yeah. What what case was that again? John Benet Ramsey. John Benet yeah. Ramsey, yeah. So yeah, that's that's the uh, deal this week. We'll see yeah. you next week, and until next time... Don't go dying on us. Bye. You have just heard... A true Hollywood... Shocker. I have never seen anything like this before. The movie Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. <laughs>